for jumping in. I see everybody, all our friends. I'm recognizing a lot of our name uh, of the names. So mahalo nui. And if you want to go text one of your Hoaloha or Ohana members or Tita, go invite them. I sent it on our text thread to all our teas. I was like, two o'clock, come check it out. So yeah, if you can go ahead and invite, you know, the same link that you guys all came on, kanayokana.net slash awinala. So hopefully you can join us and invite others. And, you know, some will be, some are going to be joining us on Facebook Live. And I just, I see we went live there. So awesome. How's everybody out there? Oh, I see Leigh Marazan, Anue Nue, Malia. All right. <laughs> cool. Excited to see everybody. And Mahina's on on Facebook. So we got all our titas that are jumping on. Awesome. Yeah, so please go invite some more Holoha and friends. Someone tell Hi'ile that her logo makes her left. <laughs> you got to have fun too, right? <laughs> as part of all of this, coming together as a community, we got to... Have fun and enjoy and share. <laughs> so mahalo nui for um, allowing us to come into your hale. And maybe some of you are on your phone or your iPad or your Chromebook. We're just really excited. Um, people are also starting to share where they're from and you can definitely let us know <laughs> if you um, where you're tuning in from, and I'm gonna start to get my um, slides up because you know we got all kinds of stuff to share with you guys, um, and I know that's why you're tuning in. And you know I don't, um, yeah. So I'm just gonna get up some of my things so we can get a early start. And as soon as Kanikahola, then we will holo mua. So I'm just getting our usual things here set up. And you know, there's just so many exciting stuff going on on different platforms. Earlier today, Native Hawaiian Student Services was did a session with um, Keoki on Laau Lapaau. So go check out their um, Facebook page, Native Hawaiian Student Services at UH Manoa. I mean, you can see their recorded session. And yeah, I peeked in for a little while. So that was really cool to see some of that. Um, <laughs> yeah, and that's another thing. I see some of you are sharing our stream. So Go we'll share them on your Facebook page so that more people can join us. Um, and wakani no kahola no leila eh olomuakako. Let's see what I got here. So some of you already started, and if you can let us know where you're tuning in from, put it in the chat, in the Zoom chat, or on Facebook. Um, we have friends joining us from Waiehu. Aloha e kaohana kani opi o crozier. We see friends joining us from Kailua, from Aotearoa, from Kapahulu, from Gainesville, Florida. Where else? Kern River Valley in Kaleponi. Aloha ena ohana ma Kaleponi. Uh, let's see, Syracuse, New York. Aloha no. Ke kaha kawaii. Makiki, kealia, kula. Punalu'u, Dixon Ohana from Waimea, Hawaii. 
Ah, uh, let's see. Kahalu u o ahu, ana hola kawai. Kahawa lea, kane ohe. Woohoo, kawai hai, mahawa i aile, mamoko ke abe, aloha e na hoa. I see Tita Kainani joining us and Kainoa. All our friends, Javi. Javi, Tita Keala is joining us too. Taupo, New Zealand. So, no Aotearoa no. Nana Kuli. No Leila, aloha e na hoa. My kahipai, a kahipai, aloha. Oh, I saw Wainaku and Pana Eva as well. All right. So, we got a whole bunch of friends ju jumping in. So, we'll go to the next question. So my next one is, what is your favorite way to eat he'e? So our theme today is he'e, of course. So put a one in the chat if it's raw, two if it's dried, three if it's smoked, four if it's poke, five all of the above, and six if it's something else. So I'm seeing a lot of twos, dried, all of the above. Number four, poke. Plenty all of the above. Yup, we like he'e in all different ways. I see on uh, Facebook, we're seeing some fives um, jumping up on there. And aloha to the ohana joining from Waimanalo, ohana Aquino. Uh, five and six, so all of the above and others. So there's definitely so many other ways to do it. And we're going to get some insight into that, you know. Um, yeah oh see number three let's see three was smoked and then of course ui is saying lu au he'e is a favorite and raw we love raw as well so all kinds yeah all kind of ways awesome okie dokie so so yeah we're really excited and i'm um, malia nobriga Oliveira, tuning in from hanapepe kawaii as a part of Hawaii Nui Akea, the School of Hawaiian Knowledge at UH Manoa. And we, um, I'm going to stop sharing at this point. Um, the Hawaii Nui Akea is made up of three, uh, or actually I should say four papahana. We have Kamaka Kuo Kalani, the Center for Hawaiian Studies. Kawai Lani, the Center for Hawaiian Language. Um, Kapapa Lo'i Okanewai, our cultural garden, our lo'i and native wine so now we're live with Hi'ile so Hi'ile can you do a brief alauna of yourself aloha kako mahalo to everybody for joining i i think i i heard judging by some of the the places that people are joining from i've got ohana on i've got uh, my teas on Mehua and um and hopefully a lot of kiki and ohana because this is a kiki and ohana kind of a, a gig today. So yeah. mahalo nui from the Ahutua of Kahalu. Uh, we are um just adjacent. Uh, we have we're adjacent to um Kahalu stream. Um and and we had a lot of rain a couple of days ago. We, with uh, Kane Hekili and Kawila Nui Makehai Kalani um, was on light show. So um, stoked that today is a beautiful day and happy to share my hale and my pa hale with you all. Mahalo. Okay, let me pull up my slides again because I know we prepped a few um, pictures to kind of start us off with before we actually get into seeing the actual he'e. Yeah, so originally, originally, well, I think Malia wanted my dad to be here. I don't think I wanted my dad to be here uh, because we would have to censor every other word. So that is, um, that is where he belongs. He's in the ocean today um, looking for hay, um, holding down that, that front for, for our ohana. But um, I wanted to start off just by talking story about he'e and the identification of he'e. Um, I think first and foremost, um, he'e is octopus. Um, he'e is also a kinolau of Kanaloa, um, god of our kaiuli, god of our um, 
a kua of our um, ancestral knowledge, a kua of our subterranean groundwater, and all those things that are deep. Um, but for us, hee, yeah, we, we use the word hee. There's so many words that hee um, um, is included in. Um, so oftentimes we use the word uh, hee nalu, which um, speaks to hee speaking to the slippery nature of the creek, the slimy, sliminess of, of the hee. Um, and so we get the word he'e nalu, we get the word pa he'e, which means slippery, also referring to pa he'e the limu, which is slippery. You gotta watch out for that limu, and if you're walking along the shoreline and you step on that, you might go huli maka flip, um, feet in the air, and crack your head on the pohaku. So, um, a lot of, lot of word baha he'e is somebody with a slippery tongue. Um, so yeah. Plenty of words we use um, with the root word he'e in it, but in short, he'e means to slip or slide. Um, so here on the slideshow, I have three different he'e that we find commonly um, around Hawaii, Ko Hawaii Pai Aina. Um, first that we're going to be talking about today is the he'e Maoli, which is the one that typically we all go for. It's the day octopus. Um, and I'll be talking about that today and how to prepare it. The other one is the he'e makoko. He'e makoko. Makoko refers to the color, the reddish color of this particular he'e. It's the night octopus. Um, our ohana, we really don't do things at night. Um, it's just a couple things that, that our ohana abides by, but we don't really go night fishing, night skating. Um, but He'e Makoko comes out at night, so I don't actually have my own picture of He'e Makoko, so I went cockroach this one from the internet, so <laughs> mahalo internet. Um, but this one, the He'e Makoko, this one bites, like it is aggressive and it will bite you, so you gotta be fast. Um, this one you'll, you'll see primarily foraging on leho, all different types of leho, um, there's the, what is it, the money cowrie, the snakehead cowrie, um, yeah, the, the, the leho kolea. That's how you know a he'e makoko ho versus a he'e maoli ho, which is primarily littered with crab shells and crab hearts. Then the he'e pali is one that frequents our pali, our rocky shorelines. Um, this picture is actually from Okumanamana. Uh, when we came upon Ho Moku Manamana in 2009, we were doing intertidal surveys there. Um, and this particular Heepali was eating, um, was foraging on, on a, a, on a crab. The, the crab was the same size as the Heepali. Heepali are really, really tiny. Um, but anyway, so those are three different Hee. But we're really going to be talking today about Hee Maori or the day after this. Hey. Next slide. I actually, can I jump in? I see a question yeah. already, and maybe you're going to share it later, but they're asking about DLNR regulations <laughs> and what is the size for gathering? Right. Good question. Yes, it's important to know our, our rules and regulations um, because we want to fish responsibly. Yeah? So um, the current rules and regs is one pound. So it has to be at the he'e has to be at least one pound in order to to take it take it home um, or to use it for bait. And some people do that. Um, just within our ohana, we try and let it get a little bigger before we catch it, um, like a pound and a half to two pounds. Um, we typically will let the one pound ones go. Um, they grow exponentially, so you could come back two weeks later and it could already be two pounds. Good question. Mahalo for that. Okay, so in the classification of he'e, yeah, classification of he'e, he'e up top, there's he'e, and then there's mu he'e, okay? So we talked about he'e, now we're talking about mu he'e. Mu he'e is squid, yeah? So pigeon slang in Hawaii, we, we all locally refer to he'e, the octopus, as squid. And we know that octopus is not squid. It's not that we're confused. It's just um, 
a slang that everybody, everybody uses. Like you just heard luau hee, which is squid luau. Yeah, it's not squid that's in there. It's it's hee. So the primary difference between a hee and a mu hee is in the number of ave ave that it has. Yeah. So hee has how many ave ave? It's not a trick question. Octo. Octopus have eight ave ave. Um, uh, mu hee is a decapod. Deca meaning 10. So Muhe'e has 10 Ave Ave. It has these two additional Ave Ave that are slightly elongated um, than the other. So that's the primary difference between a He'e and a Muhe'e. Uh, and then there's some other differences, but I think I'll stop there. So um, on the slides, we have, um, and no mind me if I go on, on and off with the sunglasses, just kind of like a habit uh, and I have pterygium so I need to wear my polarized glasses um so we have three different species of muhe the first is the oval squid and that's the one that I'm used to seeing and accustomed to seeing in Kawaha Okamano uh, Kawaha Okamano is the original name the Hawaii name for Kane Ohebe um but uh, the oval squid or that, that particular muhe'e uh, typically comes um, within our waters during the colder, colder months. So December through February is when we typically see them and then we'll be swimming and we'll spear them because they're really ono. Really, really, really ono for like just stir fry. Mm. Um, the other muhe'e in the middle is a deeper water species that I haven't ever seen live. Um, this one, will, we get these sometimes they wash up um, at the local uh, along the shoreline or atop the kuapa. And me, yeah, I like I like all kinds living things, even when they're stink. <laughs> um, I just get stoked on them. Yeah. Um, good opportunity to learn and to speculate and to think about hey, why did that muhe'e make and why did it get washed ashore? Um, the last species, the small little guy that I have in my hand is, is another muhe'e. It's called a bobtail squid. Um, it comes out at night. And if you go torching, especially in Kawaho Kamano, um, you just might see one of these little guys. They're so cute. And I'm always so tempted to like pick them up and hold them in my hand. And then they spew their little ink. And then I feel really bad in it. <laughs> Um, they're really, really awesome. Um, they also bioluminesce, yeah. So, which means that they um, they they gather all of the sun's energy, and then at night um, they also bioluminesce, so they spew off like this colorful, like neon color sometimes at night. But anyway, so just to be clear, muhe'e he'e. And yes, we know the difference between a squid and an octopus. Okay. Cool. I saw a comment earlier, and maybe you can um, comment on this. Um, Mahina was saying, Kaloa Kulua, perfect Mahina for, for this kind of Ha'avina. Oh, funny, yeah, huh? how those kinds of things just fall into place. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's also a Kanaloa kind of thing. But, okay, so. The bulk of what I'm going to be talking about today is the preparation of the air. We need to make sure we have enough time for me to make a mess and get really dirty. Um, and then ultimately show you guys how to really and tenderize the hair. Because that's probably the hardest part to making sure your hair is on it. Um, is making sure that you can actually chew it. Okay. But real short about the catching of hair. Um, so place dictates practice, yeah? So I come from Kahaluhu. I come from Kawaha Okamano. Another name for Kawaha Okamano is um, there's Olelo no Eau Hekai O Hee Ko Kapapa, or there are octopus spearing waters that belong to Kapapa, and Kapapa is an island um, offshore in there's another Olelo no Eau that speaks of Kai'a Valenu Yoke Ko'olau, yeah? Or the Ia, 
with the vale, vale nui, the vale, vale, the sliminess, slimy nature um, of the ko'olau. So we are definitely kaulana for um, our he'e grounds. Uh, we are kaulana for the catching of he'e. And so that's why, that's what I do. Um, and that's what my ohana does. And I just continue that practice that um, eight generations of my ohana have, have performed um, in this place that we call Kawaha Okamami. Um, oh, that's going to come later. Oh, okay. Can we go back to the other? That's going to be like the last. Okay. okay, okay. So just a little bit about catching he'e. There's like three ways that we catch he'e. One, and that's like my the the prime, my favorite, most favorite is pastime in the whole wide world is catching he'e from the bow of the boat. Um, because then I don't need to be cold and get wet. I get cold real easy. But um well okilo, well okilo he'e, the individual that's standing up there is called the okilo. Um the act of it is called kilo, and we're looking for he'e, and sometimes if the sun is just right. We are able to spot he'e 50 feet from the bow of the boat. Um, so that's my, that's my most favorite pastime in the whole wide world. Um, and what I look forward to in retirement. Um, but nowadays it's kind of like retirement a little bit. So I went out four times last week. So I'm happy. Um, the other way, if we cannot look from the bow of the boat, meaning the water is not malia and is not conducive to that, then we got to get wet. There we go swim, put on our mask, things and snuffle, and, and go lu'u, lu'u kai. Um, and we steer he'e anywhere from two feet of water all the way to 15 plus feet of water. Um, and then there's one other method that presents itself at a really, really kai malo'o or a really, really low tide, and that is walk feet. So if the tide's low, the ko'a, the reef is exposed, out of the high water mark, they will actually walk and look for he'e that way. Um, so those are the three different ways that we catch he'e. And then, of course, we have a three-prong or a two-prong um, ko'o ko'o that we use to, to spear the he'e to get them out of the hole. So in the picture there, the first picture, um, that's like what you want to see. That's like, that's like golden right there. You see one he'e, it's one big one, and you know it's big. Because of the papa'i, the crab shell that's on the outside of that hole. That is a alakuma um, or elekuma. It's called a 7 Eleven crab. It's got 7 and 11 um, blood spots on its carapace. Um, but you know, it's a big he'e if it eats that papa'i, because typically those papa'i are good size. Um, so you spot them in a hole, you get them out with your spear. And then continue on to find some more he'e. I put another picture in the middle there. That's a picture of a poki poki crab. Um, I don't know. Kawaho Kamano is famous for poki poki crab. Um, and that's like the favorite papa'i uh, of the he'e. So that's my friend. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway. Okay. So you want me to talk about the food preparation stuff now? Or no, do no, the cleaning no. now. Yeah, I, I stopped sharing now and we're going to go live. So on big screen, going to be you showing us yes. the magic. Okay, so this isn't a disclaimer because because uh, I figure if you're watching this, then you know you know what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to clean it. And because... I caught this, I'm going to eat it. Yeah, you honor, you honor the life of this guy or gal by eating it. Yeah, or prepping it and, and sharing it with others. So um, cleaning and dissecting he'e, or oh, I better not do that yet. Cleaning and dissecting he'e is, is part of it. Yeah, there's nothing gross about it. I mean, they don't really have blood so there could be worse things to clean <laughs> like chicken <laughs> okay talking about anatomy of the he'e 
here we have, I will give you the Hawaiian and then the English or scientific. Okay, so it's a po'o. Yeah, this is the head or what they call it is the mantle. Okay, and then we have the maka. His maka is closed because he ain't go moi. Okay, his maka. And then his ave ave. Yeah, his ave ave. Uh, his, his tentacles. Okay. Here we have the pika pika or the suction cups of the hee. We have the waha or the mouth of the hee. And then we have the niho. The niho is the beak. Yeah. So sometimes when you catch hee and, and you don't kill the hee, is ave ave will go climb all up your arm, all over your body, and you gotta watch out because sometimes it goes onto your back. If you don't pay attention, it'll bite you. And it's like a it's like a carrot. You might take a chunk, like you know, because it's just like two things like this. It's just gonna take a chunk out of you. So you kinda gotta be makaala and fast when catching me. Okay. One other part I forgot to mention. This is the, my dad calls it the snorkel. It's the snorkel of the, the he'e, but it's the siphon. Yeah. Um, uh, also, we refer to it as the poo. The poo of the he'e. Make sense, yeah? Kanika poo. Yeah. You see, so, so when a he'e, when a he'e breathes, its mantle will open. Yeah, it'll open. And then it'll force water out the siphon, yeah? And that's how it breathes, but that's also um, a way that it propels itself. So a he'e will always swim this way, unless it's crawling with its ave ave. Um, yeah, I think so. That's about it. Okay. Yeah. So we good on time. Yeah, we're good, and you get plenty of volunteers that like come help you eat them. Like, <laughs> oh man, I sorry you guys. I gonna apologize because I I cooked up some different things, and you guys only gonna be able to see them. You're not gonna be able to taste them, so it's gonna be like a smell of vision thing. Um, but my uh, camera guy over here helping me out today. Gonzo, Ryan Gonzalez is uh, going to be the lucky guy to take some home to share with his ohana. Okay, so to clean the hay, -hay yeah, so, so this was, this is important, super important, okay? This was caught and put in a Ziploc bag and frozen for a couple months. Um, that is a good way to tenderize the hay. -hay. Um, kind of like a little bit cheap but it saves you a lot of time and effort in the long run um the other way the alternative is if you go holo holo you catch one hey egg you come back um and you want to eat it immediately uh you're gonna have to put a lot of time and effort uh into uh into ha ha yeah pounding that hey egg um it's going to take a long time to get it soft um, mm -hmm. to where you can't eat it. But, but yeah, that's just what you got to do, okay? So two options you got there um, for tenderizing and storage. So we're going to do the cleaning. Okay, so first, first thing I do is I cut open the po'o, okay? And they are really amazing because... They're really just all muscle, right? Like, I think that's what I love catching. That's what I love about catching he'e and eating he'e is that there's very little waste. Um, most of it is edible because most of it is muscle. Okay, then there's these different little uh, pieces of muscle that attach the organs in the head um, to the musculature of the mantle. Okay? First thing we're going to look at right here, um, 
this is a he is an ia right he lives in the ocean so these are its gills or this is one half the other half's on the other side of his head but um, it has to be able to breathe right makikai so these are its um gills yeah yeah and then so there's a little bit of just pulling involved to pull the um the organs away from the mantle and then you get to another muscle here and then we're gonna cut it my knife is really sharp um so don't rush this yeah especially if you have a sharp knife take your time okay another muscle and one more there okay so that was like one two three four five five places where it attaches okay this part is cool so you know like cuttlefish and muhe and mm. squid they have something in their mantle called a cuddle bone okay and it's really big right like if you guys have birds like parakeets you can buy a cuddle bone from from the pet store and they're big like this or when you clean muhe yeah um it has a, a little bit of what they call a pen but it, it's a, a reduced cuddle bone that's like almost like plastic oh hey it has it too it's just even further reduced so it's located right underneath this piece of muscle so i cut it out because i don't want to eat it because mm -hmm. i would i feel like i would i would totally feel that okay there it is see it yeah very very reduced I don't actually know what it's called in Hei language, but anyway. Okay. Okay, next. This is actually the part where it's really nice to have a partner. Well, my partner is no, no partner. Okay, so what we're going to do. So you hold the mantle, you hold the head, the po'o, and then you're going to cut right here. Just a little. Okay? Just a little until you can see this guy right here. Yeah, this is what actually attaches to this is actually part of its um this is part of its um, digestive tract okay and then so i just call it this welcome no mind my pigeon yeah it's what you call authentic <laughs> oh, I, I could try to speak english but it's all good everybody everybody would call me call my bluff okay so you do that okay and then right here this is this is a the ink sac okay so you don't want to cut into that because then you're gonna make a mess of everything okay so i'm gonna cut you see that black line right there i'm gonna cut right above it because i don't want to make mess okay and then we're gonna this for whatever crab bait crab bait or just go back into the ocean oh yeah there's one more one hey, more hey, i was just wondering i remember one time because we were talking about Anasana eddie earlier and yeah. i think he did a um ha'avina on is it manini bait using that oh yeah maybe the ala ala yeah oh Hold on. <clears throat> okay, so the largest organ, the largest organ in the head is it's alala. And that is is liver. Okay. Not olos. Alala. Liver. Okay. So here it is, the alala. And it actually has its own little sack. So my tutu. Tutu Ho'ohila, Manuia, Galbraith, Cavello, used to, and there's actually even one more layer on the outside of this that you would hem, that you would take off. But she would get, get this ala ala and, and, and like ho'omalo o, um, lay it out to dry in the sun. And uh, she dry both sides and it kind of like deflates. And it's super strong, like mm. 
if you don't like strong tasting stuff, then really not gonna like the ala ala of the hair. Uh, not for the faint of heart, but she will cut it up, uh, dip them in paakai and chili pepper, and that was her chaser for her okole hau. She wow. made her own okole hau, and that was her chaser. Yeah. I don't know what is chasing what. The ala ala chasing the okole hau, or the okole hau chasing the ala. But anyway. <laughs> This is actually a really important ingredient for um, for our ohana's raw he'e. It is the one thing, and that's basically what flavors flavors our raw he'e. But again, not for the faint of heart. Okay, got a jam on this guy. So we cut, so we cut the the poo, the siphon as well, just to open it up because this is destined. To be dried okay okay next one so you know when you go holo holo and and folks say oh but did you bite the eye so you're not biting the eye of the he'e you're actually biting here and because between the eyes sits the brain you're actually crushing the brain so kind of graphic i know but that's really what's going on okay um, so what we're going to do is we're going to cut out the eyes and the brain. So what I do is I just go and I kind of do like a curve my knife up, up and under or under and up. You see, yep. So the brain is in there. It's like a hard thing. And then the makas is out. Okay. I think some guys, some people, I think they, they cook them, they cook them with the, um, with the eyes and the brain still intact, which is, yeah, you know, okay, next thing I do, um, is getting this ready for, for really, yeah, for salting. So I'm going to cut just from the waha, just here, because that's the meatiest part of the hee. So between the ave, ave, just a little cut. I'm not trying to go through and cut my finger on the other end. I'm just trying to open it up so that the salt can get in there. Okay, you're gonna go around. There's eight ave ave, so that means there's seven spaces, yeah, between the ave ave. Okay, and I can choose to, why don't we just show it on camera? You can, so when we boil here, we leave this in, but you can take, you can take it out mm. or you can leave it in. This is the new hole. Okay, so you just squeeze them and it pops right out. Okay, so that's the Niho. See, like I said, like a parrot, a parrot beak. Um, and then it has these things in there that I believe is its mouth parts or things that help to secrete digestive enzymes into whatever else, in whatever it's eating. Okay, so I picked that out. There's a couple in there. It's all about texture, yeah? When I eat this, I don't want to be feeling any kind of funniness. Yeah. Okay. So, I think we're ready to go. Okay. So, next thing we got to do, I got my, my bucket, my pocket here. The throw the hay in here. Okay. Hey, camera guy. <laughs> hello, hello. My assistant. That's wearing his face mask. We're just gonna, first we're just gonna rinse this, yeah? Because the last time this thing was, was soft like this was when it was caught. So there's usually a lot of squeezing from the catching process. Sometimes you get some limo in there. Sometimes you get just dirt. Okay, so we're just gonna do that. Okay, throw the hay in the bucket. Hold on, stay right there. And, and yeah, you guys, when you do stuff, make sure you don't use the water hose, yeah? 
like water hoses are nasty. They got all kinds of emo growing in them and and like sometimes they're toxic. So I have this um special water hose um that I use when I do food stuff. Just to keep it clean. Okay. So this hair is about three pounds. It's a three pound hair. So you gotta know you gotta know how big your hair is. That will tell you how much salt to use. And this is um rock salt. Yeah, I mean I know we call it Hawaiian salt, but it's not Hawaiian salt because it wasn't harvested in Hawaii. It was bought and repackaged by a local company. And yeah. So I use this because I don't wanna waste my good stuff, like my Hana Pepe. <laughs> pa'akai or my kalai mano pa'akai or my uh my um kua ohe pa'akai so i use this because i'm just gonna salt it and rinse it off okay right, so right. for that much hey, i would go like that maybe a little bit more okay good okay now so because this, because let's check in on my squat. I'm, I'm, I'm awesome. I'm, I'm an awesome squatter. I could teach a class on it. I can't do yoga, but I can squat. Okay. Um, so because this was in the freezer for two months, um, we don't need to ha ha. We don't need to pound. That you would need to do if you catch it fresh. And you want to eat it same day or next day. This because it's been in the freezer two months. Um, it's already tenderized. So we're just, this salting is really to season. It's also to remove slime. Okay. So we're going to just really, yeah. And maybe a little bit of ha ha. And you're going to see, it's going to start to look like uh, soap. And you should always do this kind of activity, not wearing your best clothes. Because this one, especially if you have to ha uh, you're going to be covered head to toe with stinky soap. <laughs> or hair hey, soap. Yeah. And this, the function of the salting is to, again, remove the vale vale. Yeah, remove the slime. I've seen some people do this with sand. Yeah. So <clears throat> we use uh sometimes sometimes we use a horse. Like we'll have a long pole. The hey -e will be on one end, tied to the end of the pole, wooden pole, and then we'll put a horse. Not a not a animal horse, but you know, a wooden horse. Yeah. Tall horse. Um, in the middle and then use it like a like a pendulum and sit on one end far away so you don't you don't get slime and then just easy easy go up and down like a seesaw and um and you pound the hay. Um and then there's also others that will you will have a special cement mixer for this you know if they're doing like large quantities uh, if they're doing large quantities, they'll use a cement mixer, special, specially made, hopefully, for the hair. -e. Um, and then also some people I know um, have used washing machines. Again, probably not the same washing machine that they're washing their clothes in, or hopefully not. Uh, but yeah, all different kind of ways, just kind of depends on, kind of depends on your, how much, you know, and, and the time that you have to do this. Yeah. There's also okay. a question. Um, so you don't gut it before you freeze it? No. No. I don't. You just freeze it whole. I mean, I think you probably could. Mm. Sure, why not? Okay, can you guys see this? Oh, it looks wow. like soap. Yeah, and then it also is just like really clean. So what we do now is we let it we let it um, sit for 10, 15 minutes. And then we come back 
and we rinse it, thoroughly rinse it. Um, I think a lot of people, the mistake they made, they make either is they don't tenderize the he'e sufficiently. They maybe not salt it sufficiently. Sometimes they over salt it. Sometimes the over salting is because they don't rinse it. So rinsing is kind of really important. Um, one time, a little story, one time we were on Kapapa, um, we took some uh, of our Kamakau students out there, we caught a he'e, and um, I just did it. Well, I used I used pa'akai, we pounded it, and then I rinsed it, not with fresh water, I rinsed it with ocean water. Uh, yeah, so don't rinse it with ocean water. The bug was salty, so <laughs> salty, we could, almost couldn't eat it. So that's how we learn, yeah? So at least that's how I learned. Yeah. 42 years of making mistakes, trial and error. Okay, so we're going to let it sit. And while we wait, I'm going to wash my hands. While we wait, um, we're going to go check on something that I have in the yard. Okay. That, I saw a comment and I think I agree with it. It's a good tip about having that specific hose that's just for food prep and cooking and stuff. Yeah. Oh, my table is a mess. I got to go back and rinse that. Okay. So that hay in the bucket will be destined for this dry box or the screen. It's not a box because um, my dry box is all bust up. So um, this screen, so this is, this is, so from, after, after it's been salted in the bucket, sits for 10 minutes, um, um, we rinse it, and we're going to cut it all, you know, piece it out. Um, the, sometimes the, the real skinny, the real skinny ave ave, the tips, I cut, um, and I malama. Cause I boil that and then I make a, I make fried he'e, like fried calamari with the tips. Just cause um, it it's so it, it's so small, the tips are so small that um, you, it ends up getting stuck to the screen and it'll dry really fast. So um, so I, I I rather use those tips actually. And eat those tips um, anyway. That's my favorite part of the he'e are the tips. Uh, but this is um this is he'e malo or dried he'e. Um, to lay out flat and dry and it's gonna oil in a little bit so perfect time you gotta pick this up but this has been drying for about two days today is a perfect this is like perfect when i everybody knows me they know that i'll say oh my gosh it's the perfect squid drying weather yeah which means sun is shining wind is blowing mm. um, yeah even even more windy than a regular trade wind day like maybe the best um, hey, hey, drying weather is like trade wind, maybe 15, 20 miles an hour uh, plus the sun. Um, I think a lot of people, they'll dry their hey, hey, and it'll be really sunny, but there won't be wind. You got to watch out for that because um, you need the wind to, to move over the hey, hey, to keep it from getting hauna. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes when the hey, hey comes hauna, um, it'll turn pink. So yeah, watch out for that too. Um, yeah, and then you cannot dry hay -e unless you're planning to be at home and tend to it because any kind of hint of ua, uh, you gotta come running out and pick up your hay -e or move your dry box. So like I will typically dry my hay -e at the local ia because I'm usually there more than I am at home, uh, but not these days. <laughs> So this is Paul. We're gonna we're gonna pick this up. Yeah, it's you can see it's 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 dry. So this isn't the finished product though. From here, from here we go to the broiler oven, set our, our oven to broil on high, and then we lay this out and then it'll swell up. Um and then from there it'll start to caramelize, it'll swell up and look more like boiled hay. Um, or smoke hay, 
And then once it starts to, the juices start to caramelize out the ends of the ave ave, then you know it's done and then you take it out and then you cut it for your fufu. Okay, has it been 10 minutes? Probably not. We'll rinse our table. Okay, while we're walking there, I'm going to ask you um, one or two questions I'm seeing. So people are asking about the word Ika. Yeah. Japanese. Japanese. Ika is squid. Muhe'e in Japanese. Yeah. Ika geso. Oh, I know. I can speak Japanese. <laughs> Another Japanese. question is, when you're drying it, do you turn the he'e over like dried fish? Oh, uh, yes. Yes. Am I on camera? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. okay. Can you guys see this? So, yeah. So we'll lay it out. And then before the first turn, we open up all these suckers like this. Because oh. if not, it's going to get pink and stink in there. Same with this. I don't know what you call this. I call it the webbing. Mm -hmm. um, but you open this up. Yeah, so it, it, it can dry in all of those nooks and crannies. But yeah, I'll lay it out, maybe half day, flip it over. Same thing next morning. You remember which way you had, which way you started with the first day, put it back that way. And then by the end of day two, assuming the, the weather is perfect, um, it'll be done. Uh, done, half, almost done. You finish it in the broiler oven. Some people are asking, what about the flies and the bugs? Um, yeah. <laughs> you gotta watch that. Stay over there, go like this all day. I mean, that's the, that's the awesome thing about having a dry box. Uh, but I noticed if the wind is perfect, um, the flies are now. Yeah, if it's if it's to a certain velocity, like maybe twenty to twenty-five, the flies stay away. Okay. Um, so that's kind of what I try to look for because my dry box is on bustle. I gotta I gotta fix it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Okay. Uh, we'll go wash this table off. Oh, I see a little. Uh, any a lot more of questions? Heart. Yeah, no, I see a lot of hearts. So they're loving what you're doing. And um, yeah, I think, you know, I think it, what you're showing right now is also a really important part of the process, right? About being ma -e -ma -e yes. and cleaning up after yourself. And yeah. yeah. You gotta, you gotta keep it clean. You gotta take care of everything. Be attentive. Don't be lazy. Um, yeah, like a lot of this stuff, a lot of these these practices that we continue around food, especially, it doesn't it doesn't really pay pay off to cut corners. Like our pupuna did it this way for a reason. And it and a lot of it is just to me. I, that's why I love food activities because it's um it's a true test of of patience and aloha. Mm. Yeah, because the end result the end result is like everything culminating in the form of whatever that the essence of that that thing that you're presenting to your ohana to your friends and um. And and I think they can taste that. Yeah? So mm -hmm. keep it mayo. Yeah, mayo kahana, mayo kaloa. Oh, you gotta rinse that. Yeah, don't forget. Yeah, sometimes we get we get all caught up in doing all kinds of other things. You'd be surprised what five minutes, five minutes of soaking in kaakai. We'll do to your hey, hey, five minutes longer. So we're gonna go like that. 
and you know, my chickens, you guys see my chickens in my yard? They eat all my scraps. I, if I throw like all my fish guts and my scales and, and everything, they'll, they'll eat it. So um, I kind of like that. <laughs> No way. There's a question okay. here um, saying some people oppose using dry box with plexiglass for drying fish. Uh, only plexiglass or can? Well, see, our Ohana uses plexiglass. My uncle, if he's worried that it's going to rain or if it's actually like lightly drizzling, he'll take a plexiglass out just to like put it over the top of the dry box. That way he doesn't have to move his dry box or pick up all of his, pick up all of his hay drying or picking up all, pick up all his fish drying. But I've actually seen some people um, actually use plexiglass. It's, it's different though. It's called a food dehydrator, I think. And so the whole principle is totally different. You're actually using the plexiglass to generate heat to therefore almost like cook yeah. what it is that you're trying it's a dehydrator as opposed to sun dry and right. i mean i don't know is that to answer your question um yeah, i think that answers like, it and you know for me i can taste the difference between something that's sun dried and something that is dehydrated or well, i don't like i don't like dried anything if it's in the dehydrator i feel like the, the act of, of sun drying and that practice adds adds flavor. Okay. Okay. So what? What are we doing now? How's our time? Oh, we got about eight minutes. So what? So I'm going to cut this all up and I'm going to lay it out to dry. Maybe we won't show that. Maybe we'll show the finished product. How's that sound? Okay. Some other, oh, let me go to that, that food prep slide. Okay, you want me to pull that up now? Yeah. Oh. Oh, <laughs> mm -hmm. oh wow. Yeah, okay. cameraman. Yeah, Gonzo. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. Yeah. Okay. No, I got something in my mouth. Um, <laughs> okay. So, Maria, you can pull up that. Oh, yeah. okay. Pull up in. that. The last, the last slide. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think we kind of covered all of this with your first question. Um, so obviously there's a lot of different ways that we can use hey, hey. Um, I think the most important is what I showed you guys, but the cleaning. Um, Either if you're gonna ha ha, or you're gonna freeze it to tenderize it, or you're gonna salt it, um, or really it. Like that is from there, you can do anything. So, what I showed you guys in the bucket, you can take that, you can boil it, okay, and you can just eat boiled hee, or you can make miso hee. My dad loves to make miso hee. It'll make like a little Basically, cut it up like sashimi and then make like a little miso dipping sauce. Oh. Um, you can um, you can cut it up small like this. Garlic salt, black pepper, cornstarch, and deep fry. This is like, I call it hey, hey, poppers, but it's like, um, like calamari, but with flavor. Because I feel like our local hey, hey, our local hey, hey has flavor. You know, even like the Japanese hee, you guys buy taco poke from the supermarket. That's not hee that's grown in, or that's not caught here. It's hee that's imported from Japan. And, and it doesn't have a flavor, in my opinion. I'm very opinionated. <laughs> <laughs> never, you never know. Um, okay, so once you boil it, you can chef it up however you want. I know people that have done like Mediterranean style. Um, yeah, or cut it up for your luau he'e, um, lay it out to dry, you can hang it in the smoker, smoke he'e, so this is a smoke he'e, this is like an all day smoke, like a seven hour smoke, um, yeah, you want to try? 
gone so main thing if you're gonna eat this kind of food around other people <laughs> main thing you um make sure everybody's eating it because mumbai yeah it's a breath mate <laughs> so, <laughs> you cannot eat this kind and then go to an a board meeting unless you chew gum for a long time but but anyway smoke day eh? This is with mango from the Lokoria. Um, I use mango because that's what's available. We have a ton of it. Anytime you guys want mango to do whatever, emu, smoke whatever, come to the Lokoria. Um, but yeah, any questions? Yeah, I see a few comments and questions here. Um, maybe a quick mention again about the broiler and putting it under the broiler. Yeah. So I'll go get it. Okay. So with your with your um dried hay, set your broiler oven too high. Maybe you know your broiler sheet or cookie sheet or whatever. Cover it with uh, foil, um, aluminum foil, just as a pale, cause it'll it'll caramelize and it will get stuck to to whatever you're using in the oven. So you get this, set the broiler oven, it's ready, throw them inside. Um, can keep the door slightly ajar um, and then just check it and make sure it's gonna start swelling up and then you're gonna start to see um, just a little, cause you got most of the moisture out but there's still a little bit of moisture left in there. So you're gonna start to see um, typically out the ends, um, the ends here and the ends here, you just start to like look caramelized. Whatever juices are coming out of there, it'll start to be caramelized. And then, then you know it's pulp, put it out, let it cool, and cut it thin. Um, yeah, the thinner, the better. Okay. Yeah, and then, you want to you chew slowly yeah. and savor it. <laughs> Not um, like my brother-in-law. He grabbed the whole handful and shoved it in his mouth. Another question is, do you have to soak before smoking? Yeah, just like what I did. Just like what's in the bucket over there, yeah? So what, what I showed you guys, from here, from here, you guys can do anything, yeah? From here, you can, so you can, I can show you guys that too. I don't think we have that much time, but yeah. Yeah, I think we're okay. wrapping it up now, but um, okay. so no matter what preparation you're going to do, you got to do the vili for the yes. lesson. Yeah, because like I said, that's going to that's gonna remove the slime. Um, that's going to remove the slime and that's also, oh, you want to know a test too, a trick? Yeah. To know if it's done vili or tender enough. So this is the webbing. So. You just grab your your finger, then you just rip them. Mm. See them. If you cannot rip it with ease, you gotta keep going. Keep going a little bit longer. Not necessarily add more salt, but but really it more. That's a great one. And um, there's another question here. Um, do you dry before frying with the garlic salt or was that fried raw? Hmm? Oh, yeah. You got to boil it first. So boil it first. Yeah, I tried it. That's why before. Mistake. Oh, no, my uncle did on accident. He forgot. Um, but he, uh, you got to boil it. So from here, you can throw the whole hee in the pot. Um, you got to watch them. Because you're gonna have to turn down your heat slightly, otherwise it's gonna boil over and your whole house is gonna smell like hey, hey. Um, but you boil it um, until it's pearl, um, and then and then cut it up into pieces, and then salt and pepper, uh, garlic salt, black pepper, cornstarch, and deep fry. Awesome. <laughs> Mahalo Nui. And you know, everybody's saying money kahai. Everybody's yeah. just like drooling to have some of this. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know. Mahalo. So I will take
take one more question if there's any questions out there. Um, oh, actually, I, I, I believe you're one of the producers for Vai Vai Collective. Is that somewhere where people can get your hey? -e? Ha ha. <laughs> well, some of you may have had my hey. -e. Um, yes, uh, Vai Vai at Kavai Vai at their Ava and I. It's one of the options that you can order. Though it's been a while since I've supplied them with. Oy, why did I cut that off? Um, supplied them with with he -e. but yes, um, it's part of their. I think you can order it separately. You can also do the the little poo poo flight. Oh. Yeah. Awesome. So, any closing manao before I bring up our closing slides? No, other than mahalo everybody for tuning in. Uh, mahalo to you, Malia, uh, for for inviting me and having me and encouraging me to do this. <laughs> um, mahalo to Ryan Gonzalez Gonzo for coming to Malhale, uh, but he will be rewarded accordingly. Uh, we'll send him home with some Ono stuff. Yeah, mahalo Nui for doing this. This is um, this is awesome. You know, I think these times are are challenging maybe not so ideal but it gives us opportunity to do these kinds of things that i think otherwise i know i wouldn't have the time to to do yeah um, so mahalo nui for creating this space yeah mahalo nui and mahalo for letting us come visit your hale and for sharing all your mo'olelo and please give your dad our aloha i will he can probably watch him later on yeah, yeah, yeah. I tell yeah. Him, hey, hey, why you give him all the secrets? <laughs> That's because you never come and you wasn't there for regulate. <laughs> no, he's all good. Awesome. Mahalo. All right, mahalo nui. And of course, aloha your mom as well. Uh, I, I will. Yeah. I think she might have been tuning in. Okay, awesome. <laughs> So yeah, we're just really thankful for this Avina we had today with Hi'ile. And like we normally close up here, we ask humbly that you go to fill out our survey and it takes just a few minutes. And please share your mana'o, please share uh, any presenters that you, you would like to see here on Lei Anue Nue. Um, and if you have their contact info or something you wanna learn, please put that in one of our open comment slots. Um, and then if you wanna stay connected with us by email, you can share your email, but that's optional as well. Um, so yeah, that's our survey. Oh, and look at this gang, our schedule for tomorrow, Apopo Kapo'a Lima. Look, there's a new edition because I just found out about it earlier and so I made sure right before we started, I put it all in here. So, you know, the best way to stay connected to us is go to our kanayokana.net slash lay and you can get the most up-to-date schedule. So tomorrow at nine o'clock, we're having two of our friends join us from Molokai, the Ohana Hano Hano that's gonna be um, uh, talking about Hanai Kia'i raising the next generation of guardians and storytellers. And then there's going to be a brand new Olelo Hawaii Oi session that's going to be happening at 12 p.m. So hopefully you can put them on your calendar 9 a.m. tomorrow and 12 p.m. These four beautiful Kumu, Kumu Kayapuni are going to be sharing Mo'olelo and they're going to be talking story with Kumu Ekela Kani Alpi Okrozier. And their topic of the day is Aikole Mena Kumu. So I hope you guys come back and join us tomorrow. And you know, uh, usually around Sunday, Sunday evening, Monday is when I start putting up the next week. And I already got some amazing presenters for the following week. So you gotta keep coming back and stay connected with us. So again, a mahalo nui loa to Hi'ile, to the Ohana Kavelo for sharing to Gonzo, to Kaipo, to our Kanayo Kana team. And the best way to stay connected with us is go and follow us and like us on our Facebook page as well as our Instagram. 
And you can um, follow both Kanayo Kanha as well as Hawaii Nui Akea. And yeah, you'll, you'll keep getting updates on all the amazing programs that we are partnering with. To all our partners, you know, I, I'm going to do a shout out to OHA, CNHA, um, Mana Maui, OEV TV, all of them. Once we go live, it goes live for everyone. So that's been really exciting to have so many partners out there. So again, mahalo nui and aloha. <laughs>